In this video, I'm going to talk about the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. I'll go through the unboxing, the setup, installation and configuration. I've also got the mop dryer as well, which I'll be installing. At the end of the video, I'll give you my two week review of the product. Hi everyone, my name is Paul. Welcome to Project Smart Home. Well, I've finally done it. I've gone and bought the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra along with the mop dryer as well. I couldn't get my hands on the S8 Pro Ultra. I did try and order it from Amazon in Germany, but I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it delivered. So I've decided to go with the S7 Max V Ultra with the mop dryer edition. Uh, I bought the mop dryer from uh, AliExpress and that was delivered separately. So as I go through the installation in this video, you'll see me setting up those two devices and going through the configuration. So in this video itself, I'm gonna go through the unboxing of the S7 Max V Ultra. I'm going to go through the installation and setup of the S7. I'm gonna go through the unboxing of the Ultra Base mop dryer. I'm going to show you how I added the mop dryer to the Roborock Ultra Base. I'm then going to go through the setup of the Roborock mobile app, followed by a quick view of the first mapping run and the first full clean, just to show you how that works and the outcome that was achieved. And then I'm going to go take you through the application itself, how to do things like changing the room layout on the map, uh, merging rooms, dividing rooms and adding furniture to the map as well. And then I'll finish up by giving you a walkthrough of the settings in the application itself. And I'll show you how I've enabled remote viewing on the S7 device itself. And finally, I'll wrap up with my summary and thoughts and my two week review of what I think of the product so far. Thanks. I hope you enjoy the video. In this section of the video, I'll take you through the unboxing of the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. I ordered mine from in the UK from Appliance Direct uh, and it was delivered quite quickly. So opening the box then, we've got the instructions for setup of or installation of the S7 Roborock. That was the plate ramp plate and then the exciting bit here is opening the S7 itself so we can see there we've got the, the mop on the bottom uh, and the single roller pickup and the rubber uh, edge cleaner so I'll go through this in a bit more day a uh, bit more detail later when I do the installation on the front there's the camera and I'll go through the setup of the camera later as well which comes with a power supply. The Ultra Base has actually got um, a vacuum bag in there, but you can see there, there's another one that comes with it. And then the Ultra Base itself. I was quite surprised or pleasantly surprised with the, um, the packaging. There wasn't that much packaging that came with it, which was good, but it was all in good, safe working order when it arrived. So inside then you can see it's all taped up together so it's not going to fall apart. There's um, some foam where the dock, like, dock sits to keep that safe and taped up so things don't fall apart. So in the box then we've got the Ultra Base with the three containers for dust, clean water and dirty water. We've got the S7, the plug and a vacuum bag and various sets of instructions. I'll now take you through the installation of the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. So I've got everything laid out on the floor in the position where I'm going to install it. I'm just going to remove the um, protective packaging that came around the appliance. So a nice satisfying peeling off of the uh, plastic around the bins. So that's the dirty water bin you could probably see at the back there where the tubes attach um, from the bin itself onto the Ultra dock. You can see the slightly light gray color um, 
connection. Middle, middle container is for the clean water and this end container that I'm in at the moment is the, the vacuum bag for the, uh, for the dust that's sucked up from the vacuum cleaner itself. So I'm keeping referring back to the instructions for the installation. So it comes on a nice big card to explain what to do. So it's obviously important that you remove all the packaging that comes with it and get the thing set up properly before you start using it. So there's some foam packaging inside the ultra dot base there that I'm carefully removing. That's where the um, mop cleaning function sits and obviously where the um, where the S7 drives into to charge or clean the mop. And if it's charging, it goes in, it drives itself in forward facing to make contact with the chargers. And if it's cleaning the mop, then it reverses in and does the mop cleaning. So that's the, the plate on the front, the ramp on the front for the S7 to drive up into the dock itself. The next step is the cabling around the back. So it obviously comes with a power supply appropriate for the country that you're in. Plugging it into the wall there and then on the back of the um, <laughs> little arrow there, there's a plastic um, cover that covers the pins on the plug. So I haven't spotted that. So remove that and then you can obviously plug it in and then connect the power supply to the ultra base and then there's some nice cable management around the back there to, to tidy some of the slack cable up into. So I try, try, trying a few times there just to um, tidy it away in the most appropriate way. Instructions then are suggesting to turn on the device itself so you can see the blue light come on the front of the device so it's the S7 is now powered on. So I'm just admiring the device now before I put it on forward facing to charge. So I'm just showing you the, the contacts now on the front there. So there's the charging contacts on the front and that's the camera. And now leave that to charge up. You can see the red light that's on the front of the dock. I only noticed this afterwards. So what I've done is I've filled up the, the water container, the clean water container, filled that up. Um, and I'm assuming that the red light goes off at this stage, which it does. So it's obviously the dock has detected there's no water. What I'm going to do now is take you through the unboxing of the dryer, um, the mop dryer. This didn't come with the uh, Robo Rock itself. I had to order this separately, and you'll see in a minute. I've I've actually ordered it from AliExpress, so it's come with um, um, not a UK plug on it. So I have to change that later. But it comes with a new drivetrain. You'll see on the side of it there that. Um, that drive tray has a connection on it to plug into the dryer itself, which I'm holding in my hand at the moment. So that plugs into the side and that then generates the hot air in that white device and pumps the, the air through the drive tray to then dry the mop out. And it works quite well, to be honest. I was a bit skeptical when I first plugged it in because um, it didn't seem to be that powerful but I've got it on a setting of three hours at the moment. It seems to dry it quite nicely. So as you can see there, I talked about the plug. I'm cutting the plug off and putting a new UK plug on and that seem, seems to work fine. In this section of the video then, I'll talk you through adding the dryer to the mop base. I didn't do this when I first installed it because it arrived separately. Um, so I'm having to do it a little bit later in the video. So the first thing I need to do is remove the, the ramp because I'm obviously replacing the ramp with the ramp that came with the dryer that allows the hot air to flow through underneath the mop to dry. 
So this is the, the heater, the thing that generates the hot air to dry the mop. It's a little bit annoying that it's in white, but um, not the end of the world. So as you can see, I've had to put a, a UK plug top onto the end of the cable because it didn't come with a UK plug. So I've put that in. I'm now going to replace the tray with the new tray that comes with the mop, the mop dryer, I should say. And then the mop dryer just plugs into the side there. It's a bit tricky to get it all to line up because there's a, you can't see it on the video, but there's a lip on the hot air generator itself that hooks around the side of the ultra base, which then has to plug into the ramp as well. So it's kind of a bit tricky to get it all to come together. But as you can see, I've managed to get it in. And then I've then put the S7 on the base. So that's the button to turn the dryer on manually but you can also turn the dryer on in the app itself. And the Ultra Base knows when it's done a mop cycle. So after the mopping's finished and the S7 comes back, it then dries the mop um, and it seems to work quite well. I'll now briefly take you through setting up the RoboRock app on your mobile phone. So the first thing you obviously need to do is download the app itself. In the box that come, the RoboRock comes in, there's some instructions on how to get the app up and running on your phone, depending on whether you've got an Android or an Apple iOS phone. Mine's an Android phone, so I'm following the Android instructions. Um, once I've got the app on the phone, I then needed to register an account because I didn't have an existing RoboRock account. So I'm just going through the process now of registering. Now scanning for the vacuum cleaner on my network. Using the barcode that comes with the instructions. Scanning the network now. It's found the device and now I'm going through the process of adding my S7 to my Wi-Fi network and I'm using an IoT specific VLAN for my devices such as this. So some instructions on what to do next. Um, I've switched on map saving. I live in a, a bungalow in the UK, so it's only one floor, so I don't need to worry about multi-floor level. We've got a couple of cats in the house, so I've confirmed we've got pets. And now it's going through a process of updating the firmware. I've sped this up in the interest of time, so you don't have to sit through that boring bit. But it's downloaded and installed the firmware update, and the application is now ready to go. Once the app's up and running then, the first thing that you want to do, or the first thing that the app wants to do, is do a quick mapping cycle, quick mapping run. So what you need to do is follow the instructions on the screen here, which is basically go around the house, open the doors, pick all the obstacles up off the floor, and then set the, um, set the vacuum off to do a scan of the house. So this is what it's doing here. I've sped this process up on the screen just in the interest of time. So it's just literally going briefly into each room and scanning each room to map out the house. And then once it's finished, it comes back and asks you to save for future cleaning. There are options here to um, add or change the room configuration. But what I'm going to do here is kick off a first full vacuuming run just to give the vacuum uh, the opportunity to get a better view of the, the layout of the house and what obstacles are in the way or what furniture is around the house. So I'm just going to set it out, set it off on a vacuum only run. Then if you just look at the bottom, towards the bottom of the screen in the blue 
room, you can just see the vacuum cleaner setting off now to vacuum the house. In this section of the video, I'm going to show you how I change the layout of the floor map once it has been completed. So what you can do is once you've got the map set up and the mapping run's been done, as I say, I did the cleaning run as well just to give a better view of the room layout. You can then go in to the app and start to make sure the room layouts are correct. So you can see from the map layout here, each of the rooms has given a color. I don't think the colors mean anything. I think it's just purely to identify a room. So what I've just done there is um, in one of the bedrooms, it it's, thinks it's um, two separate rooms, but it's not. And again, with the family room here, it looks as though the map thinks it's two separate rooms, but it's not. And then the hallway, I'm merging two parts together to make one space and that's the hallway in the house. So the um, at the top of the map here we've got the living room, my daughter's bedroom and I'm just going through to check that what the, um, the mapping process has done has identified rooms correctly. And once you've done that and you've merged the rooms then you can go go around and start to label them all so you know which room is which and when you're starting a vacuuming cycle then you can identify which rooms you want the vacuuming or mopping to take place in. So I've just sped up this process in the interest of time but I've essentially gone through now and merged the rooms that need to be merged into one and then labelled each room appropriately. So as well as merging rooms, you may need to divide them as well. So in, in certain situations on my map, the application had um, created a room which actually spans two rooms in my house. So what I needed to do was divide a room on the map so the map was correctly identifying the room. So has what I've just done here is chopped a little bit or divided a little bit of the hall what it thinks is the hallway space so I can allocate that space to the master bedroom um, so what I've needed to do is use the divide function to put a, a divider in and then as you can see I can then merge the remaining spaces into one room which is the master bedroom and ensuite so it's now correctly identified on the map and so I can name that room Master Bedroom. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit to get the divide in place properly. When you put the divide onto the map, you need to make sure that it's a solid line rather than a dotted line, and it seems to be a, a little bit difficult to get those in place. But once you've got that in place, you can apply the divide and then name the rooms appropriately, which I've, which I've done there. So once you're happy that you've got your room layouts correct and all the divides in place and everything's labeled, then you can start to add furniture. What I did find is that the S7 vacuum cleaner did identify some furniture already. So a few of the beds it picked up on the dining room table for example but what I've done in addition to that is started to add some additional furniture so I'm just showing you here briefly how easy it is to add some additional furniture in place so the vacuum cleaner will know where those are so in the living room um, you can see the sofas on there there's a TV stand on there in the bottom of the room and I'm just adding some additional chairs that haven't automatically been identified by the vacuum cleaner. So as you can see there, you can easily add them on and then change them to meet the scale of the room. So I've just added three chairs into the lounge and then another chair into the reception area. So you could continue to do that. I've also added a pet bowl 
into the kitchen as well, just so the vacuum cleaner is aware that that's there. Within the application itself then, there are a lot of settings that you can configure within the application itself. So if you go into the map and then the three dots in the top right hand corner, you can click on that and then go into the application setting. So I'll just whiz through these now. I'm no expert on these. As, as I said, I've just got the device, just unboxed it and installed it. So I'm still playing with these settings myself. Um, with regard to map saving, I'm saving that saving the map. Scheduling, I'm not doing in here because I'm going to be doing that in Home Assistant and I'll do a separate video on that uh, at a later date. I've not allowed the device to take photos of obstacles as it's going around the house and um, because they may end up on the internet based on what I've read <laughs> but we'll see about that carpet settings so the mop will rise I've got some quite thick carpets in the bedroom so what I've decided to do is remove the mop um, it, it just unclips from underneath the s7 so I'm removing the mop when it goes off to do the, the um, to vacuum the carpets. There's an auto drying function there at the bottom. So that's new. And this is the first time I'm setting up this function in the app. So I'm telling the app I've now purchased that additional module. It's been installed. It's there to use. And I've left the default drying duration is three hours and I've tried that a couple of times now and that seems to work really well I'm quite impressed how how dry the mop is after that time robot voice haven't used much about this I've just left it on the def default settings that are in place it looks like there's lots of um, language options there for you to choose from And obviously the volume as well. Remote viewing, I have set up and enabled that and I've tried it, it seems to work well. I'll show you how I've done that in a, in a second. Looks like there's a child lock feature on there, so I'm assuming if you enable that, if a child comes along and starts pressing any buttons on top of the robot vacuum cleaner itself, then those functions won't work. Um, my kids are a bit older, so I probably don't need to have that function. Uh, it looks like there's an off-peak charging um, setting as well, so that might be something that I have a mess around with because I've got um, cheaper uh, electricity rates overnight, so that might be something that's, that's worth a look at. So again, I haven't played with this setting yet, but it looks as though you can drive the robot vacuum cleaner around the house using the application. And maybe then you can use that to clean a specific spot in the house if you've got some fluff or cat hairs or something that you want to pick up. And that last section there is just the, um, the logs for the cleaning. So you can see um, whether your previous vacuum runs have been successful and then that looks like the maintenance section so I can see uh, as I said I've only just installed this but we can see there that um, it's going to let me know when particular components of the vacuum cleaner need to be maintained or replaced device information which Wi-Fi network it's on and IP address and that's it for that section. The final piece that I wanted to cover then was how to enable remote viewing. Some people understandably may not want to do this, but I've decided to do it. It seems quite secure. So there's some uh, information on what you need to do. It's quite a process that you have to go through to enable it by pressing some of the buttons on top of the vacuum cleaner and then following the instructions on the screen. So you have to agree to the policy, 
That popped up twice, I found. I agreed it twice. And then you have to um, draw a pattern on the screen. And then once you've done that, it lets you into the device and you can view. So every time you subsequently view the video feed, you have to put that agreed pattern in so it knows that you're uh, an agreed user. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. So just to summarize and put some thoughts around what I think of the vacuum cleaner so far. Um, the context for me is I've got an iRobot Roomba i7 at the moment. Um, that doesn't have a mop function. So moving to the S7 uh, Robo Rock is definitely an improvement there. I've had also having lots of problems with the i7 iRobot that it, you know it can't find its way home. Uh, it doesn't empty the bin properly. It's got poor obstacle avoidance and quite often having to retrieve it from various parts of the house uh, and uh, of, often gets lost as well. I did want to actually buy the Roborock S8 Pro Ultra, but uh, I think as I mentioned earlier in this video, I was unable to, to do that. Um, it I couldn't buy it in the UK and also couldn't get it from Amazon UK. Did try and order it from Germany, but it, it never arrived and I kept seeing delays. So one of the or some of the main functions that I wanted from the S8 was um, the mop drying function. Um, the fact that it's got the the um, iRobot dual roller design, which seemed like a good thing to have for, for better pickup of cat hairs and things like that. Um, but I've gone with the, the S7 now, obviously. Um, I think the S8 probably got a slightly nicer design, in my opinion. Um, the components, the dustbin and the water containers are quite exposed, which I don't, you know, is quite ugly in my opinion. Um, but with regards to my experience with it so far, I, you know, from a good point of view, I'm pleased with the vacu vacuuming capability. It picks up really well. Um, as I say, I've got a couple of cats in the house and it's picking up cat hair okay. Mopping function is okay. Um, we've got a hard kind of tiled floor in the kitchen, but it's got quite a deep grain on it. So um, we're doing a, a dual um, run cleaning mopping process. So it goes one way, then goes the other, just to make sure that it's um, pick, um, cleaning the floor properly. It seems to do an okay job um, and uh, you know, it returns to home, uh, re returns home well and um, seems to be self-maintaining with regards to emptying the dustbin and cleaning the mopping mopping function itself. So I'm really pleased with its capabilities. Uh, it's pretty much self-maintaining so far, but I've only had it a couple of weeks. So uh, maybe I'll come back to this in, in six months time. From a not so good or bad point of view, um, as I mentioned, the, the mopping capability um, probably needs um, a little more, a little bit more uh, experience just to see if we can get that working a little bit better on our hard floors. Um, from a mapping point of view, I think maybe the app tries a little bit too hard. Um, so when you do that first mapping run and first vacuuming run, the application then carves the house up into different rooms and in my experience um, it hasn't done that very well so I've had to go through and reset the map and actually go through and, and define the rooms properly myself which um, was a bit painful but maybe it's because I'm new to the application uh, maybe more experienced users of the app would would find it easier but um, maybe it's, it would be better just for the app itself just to map out the, the layout of the, the house and then you can divide the rooms up yourself. That might be a little bit easier in, in my opinion. Um, with regard to obstacle avoidance, it's done a pretty good job. It, I have had to pull out a few USB cables occasionally from the bottom of the, the cleaner itself. So um, that obviously needs further investigation. And I've noticed a couple of times when I've sent it to clean a particular part of the house, the robot's actually gone the wrong way and had to come back through the house and go to the correct 
room that I've asked it to clean, but it, it does sort itself out, which is just something I've noticed. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. So again, maybe I'll do something in a few months time. Um, really appreciate your time watching the video. I hope it's been useful. If you've got any comments or feedback, please feel free to leave them below and I'll hope you see you in again in a video soon. Thanks. Bye.